What's up fellow travelers? So today I was thinking about doing this video outdoors here outside, but according to my phone, it is currently 101 degrees out here. And for me, that's just too hot. So let's do this inside. Okay, and welcome to the studio. It is wicked hot outside today in California. I thought about doing this outside, but uh, it's just too hot. Now, I've been hot before. I spent several years rotating through the National Training Center at Fort Irwin, California. I know what hot's like. I spent a year in the deserts of Iraq, but I just don't want to volunteer to be hot and uncomfortable. I'm happy to be hot on the beach somewhere, but that's not where we're at. So the studio is the most appropriate place for us to do today's video and have this conversation. So I'm comfortable, you're comfortable, let's get started. The topic of this video is confirming your status for military space A travel. And what do I mean by that? Okay, so let's get into it. Let's talk about confirming your sign-up status for military space A travel when marking yourself present at the passenger terminal desk. If you've watched any of my previous videos about military space A travel, then you know that there's a specific sequence of steps which you have to navigate before you board and fly in a military aircraft and take a space A trip. I'm just gonna assume that you've watched the military space A boot camp videos but if you haven't, I'll put a link to that series right here. And I would encourage you to just check it out. If you're just getting started with military space A travel, that should set you up for success. Now, for purposes of this discussion, I'm going to assume that you've already signed up and arrived at the passenger terminal. You've marked yourself present for travel with passenger terminal personnel. Now, in some cases, you might think that you've successfully jumped through all of the hoops and you've done everything that you needed to do in order to be ready to compete for seats on the aircraft that you'd like to fly on. However, there are some circumstances when travelers may not be selected because of unforeseen issues. And what I would like to do is suggest some actions that you could take that might help protect you against being non-selected for a flight that you should have been competitive for. I'll give you an example of a scenario that can happen. I recently read a post from a frustrated traveler who was at the Yokota Japan terminal with some members of their family. They were attempting to catch a Patriot Express flight to the US. They felt they had everything ready to go. They had checked in at the required time, marked themselves present, and then waited, only to find out that due to an oversight on the part of passenger terminal personnel, they were never placed on the list at all. Now they did admit that passenger terminal personnel had made an announcement that everyone needed to come to the desk and check and confirm the list, but that they didn't hear it because they had some rambunctious kids and the noise levels in the terminal around them just didn't allow them to hear it. So they missed that announcement and they did not check to confirm that they were on the list. Then when roll call took place, obviously they were not on that roll call at all. They were not on the list. They did not get selected even though their category and date of signup would have made them more competitive than others who were in fact selected for that flight. At this point, they're just out of luck. Now, another traveler explained that he experienced a challenge and was not selected for a flight on one occasion because passenger terminal personnel input the date of his marking himself present as the date of his signup. That was incorrect. However, it cost this traveler his seat on the aircraft once roll call was complete and there was nothing he could do about it. The roll call was completed. But in both of these scenarios, there are things that the space A traveler can do to protect themselves against falling into this kind of a challenge. And it boils down to communication. It's the responsibility of each of us as travelers to make certain that passenger terminal personnel have the correct information. Things can be very busy and confusing at a passenger terminal. You may be dealing with somebody who has very little experience. 
So it's critical that you make certain that when you mark yourself present, everyone in your group is there and ready with all of the necessary documents and identifications. At this time, it's important that you double check with passenger terminal personnel that they have the correct sign-up dates for everyone in your group and double check that they're clear about which flight you're competing for. And of course, I want to emphasize how important it is that you do this in a courteous and respectful way, but it's critical that you do it. If there are several hours between the time you mark yourself present and the scheduled time for roll call, there's no harm in circling back just to confirm that you're being decisively tracked on the right list. Just make sure you do it in a courteous and polite way. Trust me, passenger terminal personnel don't want anyone stuck in their terminal, frustrated or angry because of a miscommunication. Missing a flight because of an error, oversight, or miscommunication is frustrating, obviously, Space A travel requires that all of us have a high degree of flexibility. And it also requires all of us as travelers to do our part. And our most basic responsibility that we have as travelers is to show up prepared and ready. I've seen several occasions where Space A travelers mark themselves present and then wander off or depart the terminal in the minutes leading up to roll call. Sometimes roll call times are moved up. Sometimes announcements are made that affect your ability to make a specific flight. If you, as the Space A traveler, are not paying attention, not situationally aware, then you're not doing your part and the failure is yours. I've also seen scenarios where at zero dark 30, a retired 06 shows up to mark himself or herself and their spouse present at the last minute in the minutes before roll call, and the spouse isn't there, and the 06 does not have her identification. And as a retired 04, I'm happy to tell everyone who's viewing this video that your former rank does not matter when it comes to military space A. We all get to follow the rules just like everybody else. Show up, be ready, Have the identification for everyone in your party in hand, ready to go. If you're doing the sort of thing I just described, then you are guilty of frustrating the process, causing unnecessary delay. So don't be that guy. Now, I don't particularly care if you're the retired sergeant major of the army or the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Your job is to show up ready and follow the rules just like everybody else. Now, if you've ever encountered any of these kinds of scenarios yourself or seen them happening in real time, let me know how it went for you in the comments down below. I'd be interested in hearing your story. So the bottom line is, even after you've marked yourself present and you think everything is ready to go, double check and confirm before roll call. You should do this whether you're flying on a cargo aircraft or Patriot Express. Now, if you're not familiar with the Patriot Express or what it is, feel free to check out this video entitled 10 Things That You Need To Know About The Patriot Express. I hope this information is useful to you and want to wish you good luck in your next Space A adventure. If you haven't already done so, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and also the bell so that you get notifications every time I post a sweet new Space A video, and it helps the channel a lot. Thanks, and I'll see you in the passenger terminal.